What's up everyone? So somebody mentioned something in the comments about authentic content. That is definitely what you're gonna get here. Um, I do have a better camera, like I was saying, on my computer. I will quickly turn this. So I have a good computer setup. Like I've never said that I don't have a decent computer setup, right? Like I have never claimed that that is something I don't have. Actually, I'll give you guys a little tour of my room. Um, don't wanna flash anything that shouldn't probably be seen on YouTube. Oh, my fingers are hiding things, not meaning to. This is it though. This is the little space I live in. There's a fat cat on my bed. There's my closet full of mm, stuff, whatever little stuff I have. So yeah, this channel is um, very authentic. I don't know, whatever. It's like, it's like a video diary. Maybe if my daughters find it later on in life, somebody shows it to them or if it's still up, if I don't take it down or if it doesn't get deleted, they'll understand their father a bit better because I just, I don't, you know, I don't get to see them as much as I'd like and, and I certainly don't get to talk to them as much as I'd like. But that being said, welcome to the show. Um, I just wanted to talk, not, not even talk, just like, it's like, it's really weird. I, I, I want to like, just address the fact that I have become a weird night person. So I know people want me to go out and check out the city and I'm going to try and start doing that. Like going out, looking around the city and maybe even other cities and show you guys what it like looks like. But that requires being up during daylight hours and going out during the day. And this whole unemployment thing has turned me into some weird, like subhuman uh, vampire type person that just like, I don't know, I'm like a mole person, like a, like a, like a creature of the night. It's weird, cause actually, I don't mean this in a rude way, it's not meant in a rude way, but like yesterday, there was a bunch of night people out, like a bunch, probably like at least a half dozen I came across uh, within five minutes, and there was night people out the day before. Night people are the people that come around here to look for things. Um, I'm gonna be one of them soon. Like, I am I am kind of one of them, but I have a place to go. I have my parents' apartment, but night people are people that, I don't know. They live, I don't know, out, outside of the, outside of the site of regular life. Um, they're there, they're on the fringes, but it's like, it's like if you go to nighttime, like, you'll find all sorts of weird animals and bugs out, right? They're there during the day, but they're sleeping, they're hidden, they're tucked away, they're not part of the daytime world. And, I, and there's like, there's a act, like a subset of human beings that are like that. And I'm one of them, one of my friends actually, who's a lawyer now, funny enough, he's a, he's a lawyer and uh, I'd like to try and reconnect with him just cause he's, I'm going through something similar to what he went through. I think like probably close to 15 or 20 years ago, he was a few years older than me. So he's gotta be, it's gotta be 50 or close to 50 now. He just he just got into law recently. He was riding a bus before that. Before that, he was doing the rich, like running a rickshaw company. One of the first in Toronto, actually. And uh, really nice guy, but he used to walk around at nighttime in his 20s and he'd come by my place once in a while. And it, it was weird. Like he'd show up at like two, three in the morning and I never slept, like I said, I'm an insomniac. So he'd show up at like two, three in the morning, knock on my window, my early 20s when I was in my band and he was, he used to put shows on too in that area and he'd come in and yeah we'd talk and like or I'd go out and we'd talk and he was just that was before he got into doing the rickshaw I think he was looking for like a purpose almost like he was done high school his his family was very wealthy um but it's not like he like took advantage of that like he looked like a hobo he had dreads and tall and he was tall I should say and he was thin um almost wispy thin and uh blonde and really he, he kind of looked like he was um I don't know like a like like he looked homeless he had that whole derelict thing going from Zoolander that's like I love that that derelict look that's actually a good look I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm kind of excited about that kind of looked like that already to be honest but um I think he was troubled obviously I know he was troubled and now that I'm finding myself a little bit, like, distracted and troubled, and I, I agree, somebody left a comment and then erased it that, like, oh, you know, this guy seems like he might need to talk to, like, a therapist or this or that, or maybe I do. Maybe I've been isolated for so long and cut off from dealing with people, like, 
I know that I feel like I'll be weird if I go to the works. Like if I go to a workspace and it's not the right environment, I don't think that I'll be able to just suck it up and do it anymore. That's part of the problem. I've done it for so long and now I've been isolated for so long and had these thoughts that I don't think I could go into the wrong workplace and take it anymore like I have for all these years. I have to find a place where I fit. That's one of the biggest problems I think with me finding work, even though I am still applying to everything and anything under the sun. Like I'm literally throwing everything up against the wall, hoping something sticks when it comes to jobs and applications and resumes. I mean, that is part of the problem. That's why there is so many of them because it's shotgun blasting, right? It's not like I'm targeting like a hundred specific companies and jobs. I did that. Now I'm just blasting anything because they all keep your resume on file, right? You don't want to keep, I don't want to keep bombarding them like every two weeks with my resume for the same company, but different roles. Like they get it, right? I remind them every once in a while, I send a resume, I want to see a role I want, but I'm not going to do it like every week, every two weeks. Like that'll just, they will put it in the shred pile. <sighs> it's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. The system I don't like, but I'm willing to play along to make some money just so I have some things to live off of. I still think I'm going to wind up on the streets regardless, but at least I'd have money in the bank so that I could eat and live I mean, I just saw on the news some punk rock bass player died. He was like, I think he was like 65 or 63. That's like 19 years older than me, not even 20 years or 21 years, depending if I'm, whether it was 19 or 21, I can't remember. OJ Simpson just died. I just saw on the news. He was 73. I'm 44. Like, so what? I got, I mean, OJ Simpson had a, had a lot of money. He lived a good life for a lot of his life. I don't know how it was in the last, I haven't paid attention in the last 20, 30 years, but like, I'm sure he still had some wealth to live off of, right? A guy like me with nothing, I don't think I'll make it for another more than 20 years. My tops have 20 years, I think. You know, I'm talking about natural death. Like, I'm not taking any easy way out. So that's, we don't talk about that on here. We don't condone that because that is cowardly. I'll tell you right now that the last thing I'm doing is that because... I would rather stick around forever and live in a tent and be a thorn in the side of society and make complaining videos than do what my friend and his pop did I was talking about the other day. That's, you know what? You just let everybody win. I will, I will just be here until the very end being a thorn in your side. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I'm just, I just don't want to be a night person. I don't want to be one of these. I don't want to be... I don't want to be jobless and homeless and broke because I have, again, responsibilities that they don't live with me. I don't live with them, but I, I, I have, I don't know, an obligation to them, right? That was the point of when we started a family. It just didn't work out. I mean, the family was planned. It was an intentional thing for the most part. It just, things broke down and I truly things broke down because, think things broke down because of finances, economy, you know, and then you get the whole, like, as Led Zeppelin said, communication breakdown. Yeah, it's weird. It is a weird spot to be in. But anyhow, I did take some videos. Like, and this is the thing, it's, it's bad. I, 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 I took some videos of, like, these people out there because I take them for myself just because I'm, like, keeping record of, like, how many people I see and all this stuff. Like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't do it to degrade anyone. I don't want to put it up here. Um, I know I'm sure some, some people would love to see it, but it's like, I, I, I had something up here before and I didn't really, you know, the, the laws are weird. They say that you can. Anybody in public apparently in Canada is up for grabs. If you're on the streets, anybody can film you as long as you're on the streets. It's too, too bad, so sad. But it, I, I don't know. There is some ethical and moral questions I have about that, you know. Um, I want to show people and what it's like. Like, this is the stuff that you don't see because when you're in your house watching your TV shows and your movies and eating your dinners and playing on computers and making love and doing whatever you're doing in the like late wee hours of the night when, the, when it's dark, there are other people out there trying to find a, a way to survive. That's why I film it. Because I don't, people are blissfully unaware of what that is. But I go out and I, I'm not there yet, but I see it. And I've only been living here for for just about a year now. And now I've noticed patterns. Like I'm pretty sure in my neighborhood, it's um, a common thing for me to see people now on Monday nights. Cause I believe Monday night going into Tuesday, it's a garbage day around here. So it's like people will come out Monday night, 
rest in the bus shelters, look through cans and stuff like that, and then keep going and then come, you know, up and down, like use the bus shelters again to rest. One of the bus shelters here has like, I mean, the, the bench is no longer made of wood or metal. They're made of like some kind of like, you know, plastic poly synth sort of crap material. And you can clearly tell that somebody had somehow built a fire on top of it because it's it's got two sticks like you know they're supposed to be like wood but they're not they're clearly gray plastic and they've sort of melted and warped and there's like a kind of a circular hole in one spot like it you can tell that somebody put something there and was it's almost like they used that as a shelter but built a fire um on top of something and then put that on top of the the bench like the plastic so the plastic didn't actually like melt directly i mean survival right like it, it sucks like last night i saw a woman and i'm not sure if she was a prostitute or if she was just an you know an older woman but she was just standing by this not even a corner but like in a very well lit area for a good five or ten minutes maybe 15 minutes not like not moving just standing there Another homeless person walked by her, or someone. I saw another guy on a bike push, like he had his bike and he was pulling a cart. There was that, the other guy that was, uh, that went by her and he was pulling a cart, um, like a pulley luggage, I think. Then there was a group that I ran across when I was walking and, you know, one guy had a bike and one guy had, um, well, one guy was, was walking beside him, sort of picking things up, but his friend had a bike. So they were like a pair. And then there was another, biking duo but the bike actually had like again another sort of buggy type thing tied to the back of it or attached so they could like you know lug stuff uh, maybe carry their personal belongings and then like other things they pick up it's it's weird because i'm learning a lot just looking out my window sometimes and by walking up and down the street i'm learning a lot about methods of survival and of scavenging around here like you know, again, I call them the night people, but I'm pretty much a night person myself. Like, now I'm one of the night people, I think. And uh, I feel like it. I'm actually learning a lot um, from just watching how they go about their lives. It's You can see the weight on their shoulders, though. You can see how downtrodden they are. I, I Sometimes, though, I do see a lightness in them, right? I think the worst thing I've seen here though, probably, probably the worst thing I've seen was like when I've seen some people walking, like lived, I saw this one lady walking down the middle of the street. Like she's clearly now just, she's lost it. The stress has gone to her. She was probably not much older than me. And she's walking down the middle of the road and uh, cars are passing her. Cause she's like literally walking in the middle, not on the white, but like in the middle of like two lanes going the same way. And, a, you know, cop pulls up beside her and tells her to get, like, the F out of the road and blah, blah, blah. Like, she doesn't even offer her help. That's what happens around here. Like, the police are brutal to the homeless and to, the, to those people. For, not all of them, but a lot of them are. I've, I've seen them honk and pull and swear at them. Um, instead of, like, offering help or seeing, like, hey, like, what's wrong? Like, she was clearly mentally disturbed. Like, like put her in the car and take her somewhere like don't like just let it keep walking the street and swear at her and honk at her like how did, you're a cop that was a police car yes i've seen this i swear to you nobody cares <laughs> the social services care cops are social services too they're law enforcement but they, they're still supposed to be protecting and serving right that that seems like not really so much of that um very strange and then I don't know. And then you have the people that sleep in the banks. I looked up some stuff about the area I lived in here, like just to find out what it was like last year when I moved here. And that was something people mentioned. They'd see a lot of young people walking out of the banks at like five, six in the morning, sometimes carrying like, again, tow luggage, right? Or their backpacks. And people couldn't figure out like, like what's going on? Like, why are these people in the banks? What are they doing banking super early? It's because you can sleep in banks. Right? Like, like a lot of times those banks just have the doors that just open up automatically. Like you don't even have to put a bank card in. I mean, even if you do have to put a bank card in, most people have a debit card. Even the homeless people have debit cards a lot of times because they have to have a bank account to get their, their whatever little bit of government money they, they do get, right? So you put the card in or you, luckily, a lot of them will just open. You go in and 
you know what, like, not many people go to the bank, especially in a quiet town like this, I would say after midnight. Maybe even after like 9, 10. Everything in this town closes around 10 for the most part. 9 in most cases. There's the odd place that will be open till 2 or 3. But I mean like literally like 1 out of like 50 establishments will be open till like 2 or 3. It, it is almost a completely dead town. Unless you're like like in the downtown drinking core. And then of course there's bars open till 2. But yeah, it's really weird. This town shuts down at 9. So you start seeing people come out by midnight by one maybe even earlier and then they have like most of the night to be out there sometimes they'll sleep in the shelter sometimes they sleep in the in the banks um i mean i'll see people sleeping during the daytime i've seen a guy sleeping with his bike laid beside him just against a fence on the grass in broad daylight in the sort of on the outside of a corner and i mean it's it was honestly probably because he want like he knew that he's safe there he knew the likelihood of him, maybe he might get his bike ripped off, but the likelihood of getting like him getting jacked or jumped, very low when you're in front of everybody in the light on a corner of like an intersection, right? And I don't think he was looking for anything in the sign. He wasn't asking for money, nothing was out. He was asleep, he just wanted to be safe. Yeah, so that's, that's something that is interesting. I think about safety all the time. I'm not really too worried about personal safety I my arms are bad but like there's other ways you can handle yourself and I'm pretty good at that um I used to go on tour with a band right in the states like I went to some rough neighborhoods dealt with some weird ass stuff I have literally been stabbed in the leg like by a friend <laughs> I'm not too worried about stuff like um you know like it's uh I'm more worried about, like, the laundry and the showering bit. That sucks. I don't even care about, like, electricity and power and stuff. Like, I don't really game or anything like that anymore. Well, something I'll do if I'm, like, really bored once, maybe once or twice a week. I, I don't even really like TV or movies or anything. I just watch movies sometimes. But if I have my phone and I'm able to pay for my phone somehow with my welfare, then, I'll, I mean, I'll have, you know, entertainment and access to the internet. As long as I have that, I don't really care. But I probably have to give that up too, to be honest. So I'm thinking I'll probably just be living, you know, books, food, and like like living supplies, right? Like that's all I want. I'd rather keep my money so I can buy food so I don't have to dumpster dive if possible. Yeah, anyhow, I'm gonna peace out. Just wanted to say, yeah, this was, it's it's weird. Like I have a lot of footage of that, but like, I don't think it's right to put it up so it's gonna stay like in the vault for now I, I put up uh, one or two things where I saw people like doing drugs and I was like whoa that's pretty wild but I think even that kind of stuff is like maybe I'm not gonna have it up for too much longer you know peace hit like and subscribe if you can once I get to 500 we can monetize I can monetize uh, not the full way but partially and then once I get to a thousand I can actually monetize and maybe have some chance of recovering because applications are still going out and rejections are still coming in. Take care.